Well, good morning, Bahamas. We're back on again. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but my laptop was acting up, so I had to go to my phone. I trust that you can hear me now. And this morning, I want to share something that the Lord has placed on my heart, just to encourage the people today. And but first, I want to offer a prayer for our nation. So I want you to join me in prayer this morning. Uh, God and our Father, we say thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for this nation, the Bahamas that you placed us in. God, this morning we cover our governmental leaders from the prime, from the Governor General to the Prime Minister, all the way down to the, to, through to, to the to judiciary. We cover all of our police officers, custom of immigration officers, defense force officers, and, and our nurses and doctors who are on the front line of this pandemic. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over them this morning. And God, we thank you for safety to their life right now. We pray for their families. We cover them as well. And Father God, we cover the entire nation there. We say, Father, have your way in our nation. Let your glory show forth in your nation to this time. Let the church of God arrive in this nation and the nations of this world at this time to show forth your glory and to bring forth a praise in the earth. God, we say thank you now. And Father, we bless you this morning. And we give you praise and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to read until you're hearing a scripture of encouragement. And from Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 10. And it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contend with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, hmm, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, and say unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Bahamas, that's our word for the day. The people of God, that's our word for the day from Isaiah chapter 41. That we have no reason to fear because God is with us. And we are not to be dismayed. Because he's strengthening us and he's going to help us. And so I'm encouraged today from that word knowing that God will help us. And so my word for you this morning is that we will make it through this. And I want you to encourage somebody else this morning by calling them, sending them a voice note, sending them a WhatsApp message, sending them a text, or even a mail, even a, an email, and tell them that we will make it through. The Bahamas will make it through. God will not leave us on our own. He will not leave us by ourselves. Just the way he did for the children of Israel, when they cried out to him, when they were in slavery in the land of Egypt under the wicked Pharaoh, um, the children of God cried out and God heard their cry. And when God heard their cry, he sent ten plagues on Egypt. Ten plagues on Egypt to bring about the deliverance of the children of Egypt. So this morning, many of us are saying that we are in a season where we are going through a plague. And many ask the questions, um, where the plague come from? Did God send it? Um, um, did man make it through this coronavirus? And we have many, many, many theories. Of course, we know that there are times when God do use plagues for judgment. We know that there are times when, when, when God allows Satan to send plagues like he did on Job. But it's for a reason. And the Bible tells us that we'll know in part and we'll prophesy in part. I don't understand it all, and you may never understand, but I know that one thing, that God is in control. And everything that he has promised and purposed to us, it has not changed, and he has not changed his mind. But in the midst of all of this, I don't want us to get distracted by the coronavirus. I want us to understand and stay focused that God has given us. Now, understanding that God has given his people a calendar, not the Gregorian calendar, because that came from 
the, the Romans, the Roman, the Romans who took over the world and took over and they, when they took over Israel and the Jews, they stopped them from using the God-given calendar and they introduced their own Gregorian calendar. But the people of God should always remain on God's calendar. And so if you are on God's calendar, if you're not on God's calendar, I want you to get on God's calendar. Because what is happening now in the world was happening back in the time of the Bible days when the Jews were in slavery and they were under hot pressure from Pharaoh and his army. Now, so in another couple of days, we will, we are, we will celebrate the Feast of Passover. Now, you know, the Lord gave us seven feasts to celebrate. Um, and one of them is the Feast of Passover. And, and the Feast of Passover is always celebrated in the first month of the religious calendar of the Jew, of, the, of, his, of God's calendar. And knowing that God, and this is the month of Nisan, and in Exodus chapter 12, 1 and 2, this is where the Lord gave Moses, and the Lord still up unto Moses Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So that's the first instruction God gave to, to, to Moses that, that this month, Nisan, would be the first month of the beginning of months for the people of God. And so that we are in that first month. This is where we are now. Even though we're in the month of April, we are actually we are actually right now in the in in the in the first seventh day of Nisan. We are in the seventh day of Nisan. In another six days, we will begin to celebrate Passover. Now, what is Passover all about? Passover was about the last plague that God sent on the Egyptians. And that plague was where he was going to kill every firstborn of the, of the people of Egypt, including King Pharaoh's son. And so God told the children of Israel, I want you to get a, a lamb, a spotless one. I want you to kill that lamb. And I want you to take the blood of the lamb and put it on your doorpost. Because I'm sending Israel through the land of Egypt. And when I send the death angel to the land of Egypt, when he see the blood on your doorpost, the angel will pass, the death angel will pass over your house. And let me tell you, when the death angel came and he saw the blood on the house of every one of the Israelites, he passed over their wombs and went straight and destroyed every firstborn in Egypt. So, we're about to celebrate Passover and a plague is on the earth. The, but the plague has come to rearrange economics in this entire world. And I want you to understand that even though people may think that the Chinese or whoever have done this for them, listen, even whatever anybody else does, God is in control. So God is getting ready to rearrange the economics in this world where those who do not have to help. Why do I say that? I say that because in the, in the land of Egypt, when the children of Israel was about to leave Egypt, God told them to go and get and borrow possessions from the Egyptians. And when they, the Egyptians loaned them everything they could possibly lend them. And imagine somebody lend you something and they don't know if they're going to get it back. And so the Egyptians loaned them a whole lot of stuff, but they were not coming back. And so when they left Egypt, they left Egypt wealthy people. Yes. And so God switched the economics from where the Jews who were slaves had nothing. When they came out of this, out of, and they came out into their deliverance, they came up as wealthy people. And so I'm saying to you, God is going to switch the economics in this world because of this play. And when you come out, those who did not have will not have. They now have. God's people will now be able to be to, to man, see the manifestation of the blessings of the Lord upon their life. Because the wealth that was in the hands of your Egyptians will now come in your hand. God is going to do it 
and he has said it, and so I believe it. Now, the other thing I want I want us to get clear too, as I as I share this money, God put the children of Israel in a time of confusion, in a time of 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 a lockdown, as we call it now. He said, I want every family to get in their house and stay in their house while the death angel passes. Do not come out your house until I give the instructions. And I will give the instructions to Moses. When I give the instruction to Moses, Moses will give you the instruction. That is the time to get ready and come out. And so you see, the same instruction has been given here by our prime minister. Stay home. Stay in your house. We will wait until it's all clear. And when it's all clear, we will let you out. So don't get perturbed. It's nothing new. It's, a, it's been done before. In the lockdown, spend time with your family. Husbands, get to know your wives and your children. Spend time with one another. Pray together. Talk about situations. Find things that family people, families can do together. Why am I saying this? Because this is what God is calling for. Because we had put the family on the back burner. We had forgotten about the family. The family, we were so busy going here and running there. We were pastors, we were so busy running to our church, running to do ministry. We forget about our family. Our, our, our wives are so busy going to work and doing this, cooking, they forget about. And so the children sometimes are left alone. But this is a time now where every parent has to be a teacher. And so even though we're working with your school and the, and the schools are sending um, information through the internet, and the website. This is your time now to be the parent. So I'm expecting now from parents the be the, the grade average should be complete about every say, oh, the, the school system is failing. So now you're the school. So that means now that the, the D average should go to A because the parents are now in control. The parents are now in charge. So this is what God wants to be. He wants us to get back to what the family is all about, which simply means that the parents are responsible for the raising of their children. And that's why God told Moses, tell them to write my word on your doorpost, put it on your bed, so your children will be able to read and know it at all times. Listen, people of God, I'm excited about this time. I also want to, I want you to understand too, there was, a, there was another reason. It was one thing about the possessions, but there was another reason why God put the children of Israel in curfew and lockdown. Why? Because he knew when they came out, they had a long trip to go on. They had to do some traveling. And he, did, he wanted them well rested for the travel. Now, understand that we travel by car. We travel by plane. We travel by boat. But these people had to go into the, into, got to go on a travel to a promised land. They had no plane. They had no boat. They had no car. They had to travel by foot, by donkey, or by horse. Pulled by a carriage. Carriage being pulled by a horse. That is how they travel. So they need to rest. So God gave them a time of rest. And what God is doing for some of us, he's giving us a time of rest. But some of us can't handle rest. Even God rested on the seventh day. He made the world six days. And then he said, he looked but said, and he rested on the seventh day. Listen, pastors, listen, leaders, God is giving us some rest. And God wants us to give the people some rest. So let's give them some rest. They need some rest. They've been going to church, going to church, going to church. Some of us go to church three, four, five times a week. This is the time to give the people some rest. This is the time for the family, which is the first institution that God created in the earth to come back to the forefront. So this is to enjoy your time of rest. God has given you a time of rest. Enjoy your time of rest. And so the children of Israel had a time of rest. And I, and I can declare to some of you that when you come out of this, you will have so much places to travel. You have new doors open up for you. Listen, listen, there's ministry. You have to go there. There are places that you have never been before that you'll have to go to minister. You may have to end up in Italy ministering after all of this. And you may have to end up in Germany ministering after all of this. You may have to go to other countries to minister where the death toll and where, where, where the coronavirus has hit so hard. They need to hear the word of God more than ever now. The true and adultery. So I tell people this morning, this is the first year that we will really celebrate a real or a true Passover. You, you will understand that what really a true Passover is a lockdown. It's a shut-in. It's a curfew. That's what a true Passover is. And so when you celebrate Passover, this is really so for many of us, or for maybe all the first time that we're really celebrating a real 
or a true Passover because we are, good, we are locked down and we are locked in, in this season of Passover. So, listen, don't forget now, God says to tell you that this, this year the Passover is about celebrating the blood of Jesus Christ. We have to celebrate Jesus and who he is. Celebrate his blood. Celebrate the fact that he died for you and for me. Celebrate that he died on the cross. That Celebrate that not only he died on the cross, but celebrate also the fact that he was buried and he rose again. And because he was buried and he rose again, you and I have a right to the tree of life. So this is a good time if you don't know Jesus Christ, to get to know him. This is a good time if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to get to know him. Listen, this is a good time for you, the backslider. Who may, have, who may have walked out of the kingdom of God to come back into the kingdom of God. Listen, this thing you call coronavirus is no worse than flu, is no worse than AIDS. And so all of these diseases and places that hit our nation, it should be time for you to recognize, listen, the only hope I have is in Jesus Christ. The only person who can save me is Jesus Christ. Save me from your sins and keep you whole. Because the Bible tells me that no sickness shall come near my dwelling place. A thousand shall fall in my right hand, and for nothing shall touch me. And so when we believe that word this morning, we can go, and I want and I want to be like the three Hebrew boys. The Hebrew Hebrew boys told the king, he said, Listen, King, my God is able to save me from the fiery flood. But even if he doesn't save me, I will trust him. Like Job said, though he slay me, yet we are my pastors and spiritual leaders who have lost their lives in other parts of the world to this disease. But though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I cover each of us in the blood of Jesus today. Amen. And I believe, and I'm believing that as we celebrate Jesus this season in true form and fashion, as family, when we get down to the to, to Passover, which is the, the, the 21st, the 15th, the 21st of Nisan, we will see a shift and a change in this coronavirus. Alright? So please. And and I want you to understand clearly. Don't forget when the children of Israel passed over, they still had problem for 40 days, which caused them 40 years before they saw their promised land. Imagine now, the children of Israel, God delivered them out of Egypt. They got into the wilderness. They started to grumble. They started to complain. And because of that, what a journey that should have took them seven days or 40 days, sorry, to cost them 40 years in the wilderness. They went around the Mount of Sinai, of Sinai for 40 years. But you see, God couldn't take them, some of them, into the promised land the way they were. And so a whole new generation, not even Moses made the promised land, the man who led them. So pastors, leaders, get your rest. Pastors, leaders, stay focused on God. Pastors, leaders, stay focused on your assignment. Don't let people cause you to walk on your assignment. All that God has for you. So, listen. After this coronavirus, or whatever we call this, there will be no postponement of God's promise. I declare that today. All the promise that God has, that God has promised you is coming to you, and it's coming, it's coming quickly. It's coming right after this coronavirus. You're going to see the promise of God coming. And even in the midst of this, listen, when the children of Israel got into the wilderness, they had manna. They had food to eat. It was not, they didn't lack. So I promised you that when it's over, we will not have no lack in our nation. The people of God will not experience lack. We have more than enough. We have overflow. Food to eat. There will be water to drink. There will be more than enough. We have clothes to wear. There will be no lack in the farmers. Even right in the middle. So we ain't got to go crazy, no wire. Hey, wire. God got us. So let's stay focused. Uh huh. We're going to make it through. We will make it through this. Listen, God brought us through Hurricane Dorian. Listen, listen. A hurricane that was over in excess of 150 miles per hour. We made it through. God will bring us through this. We've been through hurricanes. We go through hurricanes. Every two, three years, we go through hurricanes. We will make it through this. We are a resilient people. Why are we resilient? Because God is the foundation of our nation. It is in him we put our hope. It is in him we put our trust. And so I want you to understand you and make it through. Tell somebody today that we can make it through this. Mm -hmm. So, 
I want to I want to call out today the Levitical order of the of the of the person. I want to call out the singers. I want to call out the dancers. I want to call out the worshippers this morning. Because if you remember, and this is something the Lord told me three o'clock in the morning about two days ago. Call out the worshippers. Call out the singers. Call out the dancers. Listen. When Jehoshaphat was about to go to battle, he was surrounded. And there was, and he could see no victory. He called for fast. We already did that. We fast. We prayed. He called for fast. But then it was time to go to battle. Jehoshaphat woke up early in the morning and got his, got his army ready. Now the prime minister said, we are citizen army. But I call, I am calling on the army from the kingdom of God this morning. See, a citizen army and a, the, the, the army from the kingdom of God is a different army. So I need the kingdom, the citizens of God, of the kingdom of God. I need that army to come forth today. And that army are the prophets, the prophets, the apostles, the worshippers, the singers, the dancers. What are we going to do? We don't fight in the physical. We fight in the spiritual. We don't do physical warfare. We do spiritual warfare. What is God asking you? God is asking you, the, the worshippers, the singers and dancers, warfare in your dance, warfare in your song, warfare in your praise, warfare in your worship. This is the day that God, and let's take the media, the social media by storm, and let's warfare, because the Bible tells me that when, 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 when Jehoshaphat was about to go to war, he put the sinners in front of the soldiers. Come on now. He put this, imagine you go in the battle, and the king say, I want the sinners, I want the Levites, I want the worshippers in front of the army. So the, the, the fellows with the sword and the knife and the gun, we don't need you right now. What we need now to, to defeat this enemy, we need the worshippers, we need the singers, we need the true worshippers to lift up a worship, a praise in this nation. Why? Right? I'm calling every singer, I'm calling every worshipper, I'm calling every dancer to lift your praise of warfare today, your dance of warfare today, your song of warfare today in this nation. Put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on WhatsApp, put it wherever you can put it, put it on social and release it. And let's push back the forces of the enemy against our nation and the nation of the world. And wherever you are, wherever you're in the Bahamas, wherever you're in Jamaica, wherever you're in, in France, wherever you're in England, wherever you're in America, if you are a worshiper, if you are a singer, if you are, if you are a, 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 a dancer for the Lord, I want you to use your praise and, and jam back the airwaves today with your praise, with your worship, with your, with your, with your spirit of with your spirit of warfare this morning. And let's push back the forces of the enemy this morning over our nations of the world this morning. Come on, people of God. I, I'm calling you out this morning. I'm calling the army. I'm sounding the battle cry this morning. I, I should be blowing my shofar this morning, but I'm calling, I'm calling you out this morning. I'm calling you out this morning to come forward. Come forward, worship warriors. Come forward this morning in the name of Jesus. Listen. And, and I want to declare this morning before I leave that Every nation, the people of God, especially the Bahamas, will experience the seven blessings of the nine blessings of Passover. Especially those of us who celebrate Passover. Listen, there are seven blessings that are coming to you. There are seven blessings that are coming to you. Because you decide to spend time with your family, because you decide to do what God says in this time, because you decide to be obedient to the land, to the king of the land, and spend and stay with your family, you have now put yourself in position to receive seven blessings from the Lord. The first blessings you're gonna get is you will have angels on assignment for you. That's Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. Angels will be on assignment for you. Yes, angels will move on your behalf. Angels will move when you speak. So, you, so today I call forth Michael and his angels to fight the battle for us from the air. I call forth Michael to fight the powers of the air, to remove what is ever in the air, the spiritual witness in high places. I call forth Michael 
and his angels do battle on behalf of our nation, on behalf, on, on behalf of the people of God today. I call for Michael and his act in this. You can't defeat Michael. You might delay him, but you can't deny him. So I declare that Michael is so We have angels on assignment for us today in the name of Jesus. Listen, I also declare today that God is come. Number two is God will beat back your enemies, especially when you go into your time of prayer and praise and worship and use the weapons that God has given you to defeat the enemy. God is going to beat back your enemies today according to Exodus 23 and 22. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, the third blessing is you're going to, God is going to release you assets that is necessary for life. There's things that are necessary for you to live. God is going to give you assets. This is one of the seven blessings that comes at Passover as we celebrate Passover. Assets are worthy things, are worthy material things. Assets, worthy material So expect to get assets, food, shelter. Um, there will be no lot. My fourth blessing, affliction will be removed. No sickness shall come near you. This is the fourth blessing. No affliction, no sickness, no disease, no coronavirus, no, no influenza will touch your home, will touch your family. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Then God says, I'm going to give you number five is long life. That's Exodus 23 and 26. So God is going to satisfy. So, 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 so. I will live and not die to declare the words of the Lord. No death shall come near your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then, number six. God says, I'm going to, at the Passover, I give abundance that overflows. Remember now, the children of Israel was on, on the way to the land of milk and honey that God prepared for them. Listen, God has prepared one for you too. God has prepared yours too. Expect you to walk into the season of, land, of milk and honey after this Passover. When this Passover is over, the blessings will come. Then you're going to have an alpha year. Somebody say alpha year. A special year of blessings of everything that is yours and what concerns you. Exodus 23, 20, 30 to 31. You're going to have, the, you're going to have an alpha year. A special year of blessing of everything that is yours and everything that is concerning you. There's going to be, God is going to release a special blessing on your life. And then number eight, there will be a release of fear and respect from your, listen, from your enemies. You will have no fear of nothing. You will have no fear of no enemy. And your enemy will respect you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your enemy will respect you. And then you have freedom from corrupt covenants. So anything that has come into your life that is trying to corrupt you, God is going to release you from that. You will have freedom. You will have freedom from that today. So those are the nine blessings that you can expect to happen in your life after Passover. Listen, Passover is only six days away. It begins on the, on the 7th of April, which is the 13th of Nisan, Passover. And 7th and the 8th, of which is the, 5th, the 13th and the 14th, and the 15th is 11 bread. The 16th of Nisan and 11 bread. So that week, we celebrate Passover and 11 bread. And up to the 15th of up to the 15th of April, which is the 21st of Nisan. And that is where I am declaring that as of the 21st of Nisan, that the coronavirus will be gone. And we will begin to walk into these blessings of God. We will begin to walk into possession of God. We will begin to see the favor of God upon our life, upon our nation, upon the Bahamas. That is what we're going to see. I believe that because God says it, and so I'm encouraged today, and I want to encourage you to know that, listen, God is in control of the Bahamas. He is God from Grand Bahama in the north to Inagua in the south. He is God of Inagua, Bayguana, Ked Island, Long Island, Elutra, Exuma, Abaco, Bimini, Abaco, Bimini, Grand Bahama. He is Lord of the Berry Islands. He's Lord of South Andres, North Andres. He's Lord of Manawaki, San Salvador. He's Lord of Ked Island. He's Lord of Exuma. God is Lord of his Bahamas. Pastor Miles Monroe always says, God lives in the Bahamas. And paradise is his playground. Listen, be the people of God. We have to get back to the point of our life. There, we can declare that God lives in the Bahamas. And paradise is island 
is his playground. It's in people of God. I want to keep you on this timeline. I want you still on this timeline because coronavirus has come to distract us, but we will not allow it to distract us. We will celebrate Passover, and this will be the first time we we'll really celebrate a real Passover. We won't be too busy this time to celebrate Passover. My last remark to you is this. The word corona means crown. The word corona means crown. The Lord said to me that in this season, Satan is trying to replace the crown of thorns. But let me tell you something. There is no crown greater than the crown of thorns. Because you see, corona takes life. The crown of thorns gave life. The corona brings sickness. The crown of thorns brought healing. Coronavirus brings death. Hey, the crown of thorns brings life. Life through Jesus Christ. I trust today that God will bless you. God will keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.